Okay, good day students. Now today we are looking at loops in Pascal. Now, to get a good idea of what a loop is, a loop simply is where you want to repeat a certain block of code. So loop is the same thing as repeat, same thing as iteration. Any one of those words, same thing. All right. So looping is where you want to repeat a certain block of code. Now for CXC purposes, I know I keep saying for CXC purposes because when you go to university or when you take up programming as a professional or writing other programming languages, there are going to be other kinds of loops, of course. You have go to many other kinds of loops, several others. Shouldn't say many, but several others. All right? Kinds of loops. Now, let us get into this. Now, loop. For one of the first loops we have in Pascal that we want to look at is a for loop. This repeats a specific number of times. So, you know you want to repeat a certain block of code five times, ten times, seven times, a hundred times. You do you will do a for loop because the amount of times you want to loop is already predetermined. You know exactly how many times you want to loop. Alright? There's something to note about a for loop as well. It automatically initializes itself as well it as well as increments itself. These are things we're going to be looking at this video. This video will be fairly lengthy because I'm going to go through these very slowly. Right, there's no rush for this video, so you can just you know forward search, backward search, rewind, fast forward, whatever you want to call it. All right, do while loop a do while loop repeats as long as the condition is true. Now, there are certain things you want to pay attention to. The two, the two foremost things are one, you must initialize a variable, you must give the variable an initial value at the beginning of the program or the beginning of the loop. A variable you want to call it count you want to call it x whatever you want to call it but the variable must get an initial value would that be one would that be zero whatever value you want to start at because this variable will come through the loop you will see this later and it's demonstrated it's something that to keep in mind all right also you must increment you have to change the value of the variable so the variable eventually will stop when it gets to a certain point or the condition becomes not true anymore it's no longer true the variable can tell the computer okay stop looping now because it's no longer true so while the variable is true it will loop you soon see exactly what i mean i know it's kind of hard to imagine right now you don't see exactly what i mean all right repeat until that's the opposite of a do while loop a do while loop repeats when a condition is true a repeat until loop repeats when a condition is false all right, give you a simple example. Let's go back and do while for a moment. While it's raining, take an umbrella to school. While it's raining. So you look outside. Is it raining? Is it true it's raining? While it's raining. So therefore, take the umbrella to school. A repeat until loop will sound something like, this, something like this. Until it stops raining, take an umbrella to school. So look, look outside. Has it stopped raining? No. So then, take the umbrella to school. Now, um, item A is saying what applies to the do while loop applies similarly to the repeat until loop. You must increment, you must initialize. All right? In other words, not to end up in an indefinite loop. And B, a unique thing about a repeat loop is that it's called a post test loop. In other words, the test occurs at the end of the loop. So it's very likely that it will execute the code once because it's a post test loop all right and this little table at the bottom here basically showing you on the extreme left column a simple program calculating the circumference of a circle simple program and then the highlighted sections for for the for the for loop just showing you the three or four lines of code you need to add to create the loop so all the highlights are showing you in the third column just the areas you need to change so once again, a simple loop, a simple uh, a simple code, simple construct, procedural construct, simple construct to carry a perimeter of a room or area, simple stuff like that, or add two numbers, find the product of them or whatever the case may be, you can convert that to a loop by simply adding the sections in yellow, in the yellow highlights. So for the for loop, you see what to add in the yellow highlights. The while loop, you see what to add in the yellow highlights and the repeat until. You see what to add in the yellow highlights. Now remember this up here says don't repeat yourself. This is why we loop. 
let us get into this now so you can see actually what we're talking about. So here's a code that is already pre-prepared that we're calculating the circumference of a circle. Now, if we want to calculate the circumference of three circles, here's what we have to do. Now, <clears throat> now this code that is about 20 lines long, there about, yeah, give or take. All right. To have this repeat three times after, now copy this. We can copy it. Let's run it first. See what happens. Let's run it and see what other curves. All right. Give me the circumference of any circle. Let's say seven. Program runs. Um, exit code zero. Press enter to exit the console. Cool. That's it. But what if we want to calculate the circumference of three circles? Now we have to highlight all of this. And then we copy. And then we can come down here now. And let's paste it in. All right. Now let's run the code. Oh, we have to do it one more time because we're doing three circles. All right. So I paste that in. So this this now becomes 30 something lines of code. All right. And let's run this. So now, let's say we have seven again. The circumference of that circle is 43.99. Let us say we have 11. 69.12 let's say we have five then it ends but this is an inefficient way suppose you're a teacher suppose you're at tax office suppose you are an accounting firm and you're doing payroll and you have hundreds of employees thousands of students or persons come to the tax office like hundreds of thousands of persons paying taxes would you want to repeat the same sequence of code a hundred thousand times no, that does not make sense. So, to bring across the efficiency that we want, we simply would write a loop. So, let us do this now and make our lives very simple. So, to create this loop now, we want a counter, a variable to count through the loop. So, let us say we have x. Alright, my mouse acting up on me here. Let us say we have x. We want x to count through. x has committed many a sins in math. Everything x do. All right. Let's use the new one. Let's use count. Count equal integer. Count therefore is integer. All right. So that's what we're saying. Count is going to be. And we're going to use count to traverse the loop to go through the loop. And the first loop we're going to do is a for loop. So it's a for count colon equal to because we're going to assign one, then two, then three to the variable count. Alright, so count, therefore equal to 1, 2, 3, do begin. Alright, should probably put begin down here. Then my code look a little bit better, I guess. For count equal 1 to 3. So we're saying that, guess what computer, I want you to count. Right, 1, 2, 3. That's basically what we're saying. And to end this loop now, to end the statement, we put end the semicolon at the end of the loop. And now let us see if it will repeat three times. So our code, just a little bit longer, and we add basically just four lines. We add a counter, right? We just count. We're going to use X, but we say, you know what? Since everybody else is using X and X is always committing a whole other thing, every day X equal to something else in math, let's just work with count, right? So we say now for a count, colon, therefore equal one to three. So count is going to count through the loop for us. And let's run this now. Now we see our program runs. Let's say the radius is 3. Then the radius is 8. Uh, this server issue. All is coming up every now and again. Copy this. Let me refresh the page. Internet and its craziness. Alright. Let me just highlight all of this and just go back to my actual piece back in my actual code. Now let's run this again. Hopefully no server issues this time. All right, cool. So now let's put in eight, let's say seven, and let's say nine. Program runs three times, three times, we're done. So this is a simple for loop, if you notice. And just to add another dimension to this, let us put something here. Let's say at the beginning of the loop, I'm going to put this statement. Write ln, open bracket, single quotes. We are at loop number. 
So all I'm doing here is to put on oh, count, not counter. We're putting this notation in so we know which loop we're doing, right? So count, and if it is I put count, so count will always have the variable contain the value that will show us which loop, which number loop we are, all right? If you may want to put it that way, all right? Let's go four, nine, three, and that's it. And if it says, um, we are at loop two, we are at loop three, and above that, it would have said we are at loop number one. So you saw at each at each interval which loop we're doing. To change this now to a while loop, we have to do this. Let's change this. We can say while count is less than or equal to let's say three. Do all right. So that's the only thing we change. But notice what happens now. If I run this program, notice what happens. We are at loop number zero. Notice that here, you know. Put in five. We are at loop number zero. Put in seven. We are still at loop number zero. So guess what? We did not give count an initial value. We did not initialize it. So we can keep putting in numbers all we want. It is never going to change. We're still at loop zero. So now we are caught up in an indefinite loop. So to stop this, we have to now go ahead and do this now. We have to actually put in a little bit of work now. Let us say we give loop an initial um, count an initial value. So let's say count therefore equal to one and semicolon. All right. Now count is equal to one. So it won't start off at zero anymore. But let us see what happens. Run. So we initialize. All right, let me get rid of this little thing here. All right, I'll just say seven. We are at loop number one. We're at loop number one. Um, six, we're still at loop number one. So it is still not changing from one. We're still caught up in an indefinite loop. Just at the first one, we're at zero. Now we're at one. Right, so let us stop this program. No, we have to do what is called incrementing. We have to tell the computer to change the value of count. All right, so then now, how do we do that? We say count. Now, this count you can basically ignore the one I put just on the screen at line 24. You can ignore that one simply because it will contain whatever is on the right side of the equal sign. In other words, Whatever the right side of the equal sign turns out to be, that is what it will contain. So, let us say count plus one. We are, what we're doing in this instance is that we are counting. We are counting by one each time. So, we are saying that count here is going to be equal to whatever the last value of count is plus one. So, the last value of count was one. Up here, I'm gonna add one more to it. So let's run this program now and see what happens. All right, so we're running the program. All right, so we are here. Let's say it says 12. We are at loop number one. Now we're at loop number two. Wow, now we're making progress, man. 78, that's a big circle. We're at loop number three. And then notice we said while count is less than or equal to three. All right, now we're equal to three. Let's say we're at 56, the program ends. All right, so to mitigate the problem of an indefinite or infinite loop, we have to initialize, that's line number 14, and we also have to increment. Increment is like counting. You're counting by one, you can count by two as well. Just change that to plus two or plus three, and you have an idea what would happen there, right? You should start to observe what would happen you can try that out on your own but for time constraints let us move on now to a repeat until loop now remember we said in this in the notation here that a repeat until loop operates similar to a do while loop in terms of the fact that you have to initialize you have to increment 
but the difference with this now is a post test loop in other words with this loop the test is the test occurs at the end so let us do this now let us go here erase this and we're going to put repeat repeat and I should get rid of this begin here if I remember my rules all right these are things remember by practice and my and, and by memory and the memory department of my brain does not work so well so let's hope there are no errors here I say until um, count in this case now I'd say greater than or let's say equal mm, let's say greater than three because I wanted to repeat three times all right so I'm saying that until count is greater than three and I'm going to run this all right let's run this now hopefully there are no errors good we are at loop number one all right let's go four as a radius all right we're at number two five we're at loop number three and okay let's go seven program ends so actually let me see we did four five seven all right so basically it looked like we might have repeated about three or four times about three times greater than three all right so what would happen is this if you notice the, the repeat until loop that's not my focus about how many times it repeated my focus right now is on is on, on the premise of the loop until count is greater than three so because count was not greater than three it repeated if we make this mistake for example oops let me not do that sorry my mistake come along here press enter here if we come here for example and put less than less than three until count is less than three and run the program here is what happens it will run one time because remember the test occurs at the end of the loop so even though count is less than three and it should only repeat while it is false but the fact is that this is true right now because if it doesn't test at the end of the loop it repeat it will repeat once seven that's it it doesn't test after all. oh oops guess what count is not less than three so it stopped because count is actually one so i so i repeat until loop will repeat while the condition is true one time because the test occurs at the end of the loop all right so that's about it for loop loops guys but if you wanted to do this in a repeat like this we could we could have done this as well now we could put count to i was going to end the video there but let me do this we could say count equal to five but then if you notice we said count plus one so this would create another indefinite loop because it count less than so that to change this eventually to minus so then the loop would work all right and then run i hope you guys understand that hope i didn't confuse you but if you look at it carefully you'll pick it up and realize what exactly what is happening there and the loop ends because now we're saying count is five but what we did was this we change to minus one so eventually the condition would change so the loop would stop because if we still had plus one you'd count from five go all the way up and then count would never become less than three would come to one billion quintillion zillion and whatever the case may be all right so you'd create another kind of indefinite loop so i hope that is clear to you guys and you see exactly what's happening and you have a better feel of loops all right now i'll show you this screen again so if you want, you can pause the video and make note of any information that you see there all right and this is the yellow highlight here says the sections highlighted in yellow are showing the only sections of code to be changed to determine which loop to use so it's not like you have to change a whole lot of things all right guys so i hope that helps i hope you're understanding loop a little better now next video i'm going to show you how to terminate loops different ways you can terminate loops terminate different kinds of loops all right, guys, have a good day, and I hope you found that informative.